karate is not just a sport. In an African city like Dar es Salaam, where often the only law that applies is that of the strongest, being able to fight like this is considered a superpower. The dojo is much more than a gym. In Japan, the word means the place for finding the way. For his students, Sensei Jerome is not only a martial arts instructor. To everyone in Dar es Salaam, Jerome Magama is the Black Samurai, a superhero who has dedicated his life to the weakest of the weak. In Africa, the weakest of the weak are kids with albinism, and today, I'm going with him to a very special karate class. Albinism is a genetic disorder. It means being born without melanin, the pigment that gives color to the skin and protects it from ultraviolet rays. In a country where the sun beats like a hammer, this would already be a problem in itself, but it's not the only one. In sub-Saharan Africa, people with albinism are considered bad luck, and they're often abandoned by their families who see them as a curse. According to local beliefs, they are magical creatures and amulets made from their bones are thought to have great powers. To avoid being killed or mutilated, they are forced to live in hiding or locked up in centers like this one. Around the country, many albinos they lost their hands, other they lost their legs, other they lost the many body of the part of the body. Depend on what and which these witch doctors they are telling them to bring to them. They are going to the witch doctors and witch doctors is telling, okay, if you want to succeed on this and this, uh, bring me the bone of the albino. <laughs> When I visit the camp, I met one kid which was albino. She had a sister, also she was albino. One night they came getting in front of the mother and in front of this other kid. How this kind of people they can do that in front also of the other people, of the kids like that. She's albino. This picture is living with them every, every day. For me, it was, uh, it was the moment which I say no. Claudia had come from Poland to complete her doctoral thesis. 
She was supposed to stay only six months, but after meeting Jerome, she abandoned her university career. And now, this has become her home. Jerome, for his part, maintains that there is nothing casual about their meeting. He had understood from the beginning that she was the woman he had dreamed of as a child. Jerome, he knows that I left everything to come to Tanzania. When I met and I already we decided we want to be together, it was like not long discussion where we are going to live because Jerome had already job here. This is his life. Since he was young, he was building his personality, his career, his life based on, based on karate. And what he achieved, he achieved by very hard work. So for me, who doesn't care much where I'm going to stay, and him, who has everything here, uh, was a very easy choice to, to decide to stay here. But it was very comfortable to know that he told me that if it's necessary, we can, we can uh, shift to Europe. He, he didn't expect from me to say that I'm staying here. He gave me the right to choose. And uh, I have to say, because now we have a 15 year old son, that what he said that time is the truth. We are completely partners at home and at work. <laughs> Mamut is an athlete at Jerome's dojo. Zungu and Atumani are his sister's kids. When Atumani was born with albinism like Zungu, the boy's father refused to accept it and abandoned them in the night. Since then, they have been living with Mahmoud and his family. Where in the meantime, Mahmoud's own twin girls, Samira and Munira, have arrived. Jerome in 2005. I studied martial arts, especially karate, when I was young, in school. You know, when I was a child, I was very naughty in the streets. I like fighting. So one day, I lost with my fellow ones because he was big than me. So I asked myself, how can I win to someone is bigger than me? I start studying karate. I have five children with albinism. Karate uh, is the only one that will guide them from fairness in the streets because we know that uh, the streets, there is too much naughty guys. And uh, here in Tanzania, albinism, they take much risk, we know, all of us. I'm a mother with my friends here, eh? black samurai. They have to study courage in order to be free, to remove fairness, to be strong, to be prepared for what happened, for what will come. If they will, need to, they will meet the naughty guys, they will help themselves. I don't care about that. So if they learn courage, I think uh, everything will be possible for them. There's no need to fear anything. They're going to make it. Twice a week, Jerome comes all the way to downtown Dar es Salaam to teach karate classes for kids. Zungu and Atumani struggle to keep up with the others. Albinism affects the eyes, 
making them far more sensitive to light, and this makes everything more complicated. Yeah, black samurai under pressure <laughs> of sending the email to the government, National Sports Council. I have to send it because it's needed just this morning and power was off. In Africa, even sending an email can become a real struggle. Every year, Jerome's Dojo organizes a karate seminar open to athletes from all over Southeast Africa. Sensei Ganshan lost an eye when he was a child, but thanks to his training and spirit of sacrifice, he has managed to win the country's most important tournament four times. Fidili is an illustrator and is working on a graphic novel dedicated to the black samurai. The idea is to help young people understand the true spirit of karate. Let's continue with the other issue first. <laughs> My head will blow up. <laughs> when you talk about my life, you are talking about karate. So I don't know in which angle to start, but 90% uh, uh, of fam my family members, they were not supporting me doing karate. The only person who was my mom, she was always sitting aside watching me. But unfortunately, she just passed away when the person which you are depending is gone. Then you have problem. Karate is not just uh, learning skills of fighting, kicking and punching. There is very, let's say, there is wide life skills in that karate. My first time when I met my professional instructor, it was here in Dar es Salaam. So every day I was going again and again, again and again to watch the training, to watch the training. And when I was coming back at home, I was training myself what I was, yes. Sensei one day approached me and started to interviewing me. End of the day, he knows that he, he, he got the information that I can't afford to pay. So he just invited me to join the club. And then since that time, I got the free pass to start a training. Yeah. Karate is a, is a, is a, is a, is a lifetime sport. It's a sport which can shape anybody to be a good person. To know uh, how to fight doesn't mean uh, all the time you have to fight. This is shaping our body, shaping our mind to have this confidence, self skills of controlling ourselves. You can ask myself, like, when, when last I was fighting on the street? I don't remember. You see, just without the reason, never. You understand? Why? Because karate was planting that, that life to me. Wherever you are going to do with these skills which you are learning, something is going to happen. And not just simple thing, is something danger is going to happen. So it's up to you to shape your mind and understand that it's not just the something which I'm, I can just use it anywhere, anytime. Unam target 
pembeni. Sawa? Yeye ndio atakuwa na kazi ya jukumu la kufanyaje? La kumblok. Na sio kukwepa wewe. Yeye ndio atakuwa na block yake inaishia hapa. Unaipata, umeona Na una uwezo hata kushika. Hebu shika. Umeona? Eh, umeona? Una uwezo kukamata. Hakisha huko kwenye target. Naanza na hichi. Nee. Sana. Una wai ku block. Umeona? Yaani block umewahi ku block ni ngumu unaona ipita chini hapa. Haitakiwi ipite chini. Yaani subiri kwanza sio unasikiliza mimi hesabu yangu. Wewe unasubiri kitendo atakachokupiga huyu. Unaona kitu kinakuja ataki inakuja mbele yako ndio unafanyaje? Una block. Lakini usianze ku block kusikiliza namba wakati bado ataki bado haijakuja. Ikija ataki nataka utakuwa unawahi wewe afa ataki ndo anakuja nyuma yako. Ndio kama hivyo ilivyotokea. Ngumi imepita kwenye mdomo wako wakati wewe tayari block yako iko juu. Sawa, kwa kuwa makini. Ich. Ni. Sam. Chi. Go. Rock. Sit. Ach. Ku. Jo. Pass. Pass. Yame. One of the problems that people with albinism have to deal with is the progressive loss of vision. The lack of melanin also affects the retina, and they should avoid sun exposure without protective lenses as much as possible. So, Jerome and Claudia have decided to give them a present. The two siblings are as tense as if they were about to face an exam. The fact that they cannot see the symbols on the overhead projector makes them uneasy, as if there is something wrong with them. Many people with albinism in Africa can't afford glasses. They live in a blurry world that makes their integration even more difficult. For the first time, Zungu and Atumani's world begins to take on more defined contours. Coming back from the beach, Jerome and Claudia visit the place where they would like to build a dojo for kids with albinism. The biggest problem, however, is getting the authorities to accept the idea that karate is not a violent activity. Uh, I believe karate can help these people a lot, especially to build their self-confidence and to put in spirit on them that uh, they don't need to give up on anything. They have to understand that martial arts is not only fighting. This place is where we are going to, to build the new heroes youth center. It's going from up to the end of the wall. Coming here, up to up. And when it's going along, this side is going up to that tree. Slowly, slowly, as they used to say in Tanzania, pole pole and diomwendo. And this is not for us, this is for people who they are suffering around. Me, myself, I was in that life. So I know exactly what is happening, I know, you know how these you know people... These needs. You know I know these needs. Yeah. I know very much. Sensei Edward is one of Jerome's teachers. He lives in South Africa and has come to Tanzania to give the seminar organized by Jerome. I'm the one here who's standing behind since this time. Yeah, because here you are sitting here. Sitting. Yes, yes.
I see here, this is Stan Schmidt, eh? Yes. father is my karate student. That's why now he's not coming to the dojo, because these boys, they have to go to school. So it was hard to leave them alone. All the time must be around them to know where they are, where they went, with who, what they are doing. So end of the day, I came back to Mahmoud and I say, hey, I would like you, this, especially the kids, to start to train karate. And I offer free classes for this kid, free membership to the dojo, everything ah. for free. So the job is just these kids to come. But most of the time, we are finding the way for these kids to come to the dojo because him himself he can't afford. Yes. So all the time we are around him, as you see, we are like a yes, one family yes, 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 and yes, make sure yes. he's not pulling hard too much while we are around. It is Zuma and? Zungu and Atumane. Now tell me, Atumane is attending school? Yes. But it seems to me started late. Yes, because of... This because fear, yes. First of all, it was fearness, but is the, is the kid who had the big problem with the eyes. That's why even he was late to go to, 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 to school. You know, Jerome, why we need them? We know that what other people are doing to them. But we, as karate people, we must make them feel free, safe, and protected when they're with us. I would like them to go to Japan where karate originates and where they'll be meeting a lot of Japanese instructors, even the country itself, so that they can understand better this martial art called karate. You know, you know a good thing, the door is open now. It had for 40 years, 40, to go to Japan. And when you are there again, it surprised me. I thought that maybe, like in South Africa, you know, when you are black, they will have a special room, a special place to teach you. They will never put you into to train with white people. But I said, but in Japan, everybody one floor. <laughs> and the Japanese, they, touch, they just teach anyone who is right in front of them. They don't say, yo, because you're black, stand this side. <laughs> that opened my mind. Japan was a turning point in my life, and it never went off my mind. The life will be different. They, they, they will understand that, you know, we can't do anything on Earth. The only thing we must be exposed so that we can be able. We are capable. There is no such thing that you cannot do this, this one can do that. There's no such thing. It is people who are making other people to think that they cannot do things. And by the time they reach that level of taking them internationally, they must look, you know, well, you know. Do they have this cream, a special cream? Mm. It's not something that you can just get in any shop. Mm. I think what we should do, we should bring this also to the karate people and say, man, look at these kids. Can we put something, some donation, so that we can able to buy this for them? We must have an albino in Japan next year on that floor. We'll make it possible. Sensei Edward is one of the first African karateka to establish himself internationally. Although he is forced to walk with crutches, when he wears the kimono, he doesn't seem to need them. They've come from all over Tanzania to hear his karate lesson, but Zungu seems to have something else on his mind.
But now you could now later you'll be able to control you. Oh, 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 oh. Now your fist, your left fist. Unfortunately, Zungu's eyesight is bound to get worse. He must therefore learn to move as quickly as possible if he is to be able to defend himself and his family. To do that, he needs to figure out where he's going wrong. Jerome has decided to give Zungu his own camera. This will allow the boy to review his training and perfect his technique. Zungu is never aggressive. He likes to study, to observe the world, to understand how things work. If he could choose, he would probably spend most of his time in front of a computer rather than wearing a kimono. He cannot choose, however. To people who believe in the magical powers of albinos, their bodies can be worth thousands of dollars. People who live in his neighborhood struggle to earn $10 a week. Mahmoud's family lives in two rooms. The doors have no locks. And everyone in the neighborhood knows that five kids with albinism live in that house. My name is Zungu. My full name, my name is Zungu. He's very close. I told him back, back. My name is Zungu. My full name is Abdul Kadir Omari. My young brother, his name is Athmani. And he, his full name is Athmani Omari. Okay. And uh, that one, he is my uncle. His name is Mahmoud Abdul Kadiri, and uh, that is my that is my family. Okay. That is my mom. He, her name is Mariam Abdul Kadiri, and that one is my young. He, <clears throat> He's my young sister. Her name is Mariam Abdul Kadiri, and that one is my is my auntie. Her name is her name, but I Asma Asma Abdul Kadiri, and that one is my grandmother. Her name is Nuru Abdul Kadiri. That is my family, all of them. <laughs> In Dar, as in most of southeastern Africa, Zungu is not a real name. 
The word derives from Muzum, the nickname not always friendly, with which the English settlers were once called. Today, it stands for White Man. It's enough to take a few steps around Bagala, Mahmoud's neighborhood, to hear it repeated often. The next Southeast African Karate Championship will be held right in Dar es Salaam. There will be guests from Japan, and it could be a great opportunity to showcase Zungu and Atumani's progress. So, every morning, at the crack of dawn, Jerome hosts the boys for extra training. <laughs> Let's go each. Me. Sun, Asuman, get ready. Kime, here. She. Kime. Go. Rock. Cheech. Hatch. Q. Jukiai. Puss. Puss. Huh? Go. I'll have to wait. Go. I'm going to be left. Nazo <laughs> It's very hard to find clear, clean technique. I am very happy to see that Zungu is still interested in karate. Okay, he is albino, he knows that he needs self defense, but he's still a young boy. You know, when he was doing uh, karate here in our house, he was doing this because he was feeling that he has to do. But me, I personally, I didn't see any passion in him. It was like, okay, I'm coming with the uncle, I'm doing this karate. I know it's good for me. Until so, my point is like, it's very important you to maintain this spirit in, in, uh, uh, in Zungu. He has to, he has to believe in his, himself, but he has to see that you believe in him also. Because he's still, first of all, he, this is young boy. Let's go. Not far away, Zungu is starting to understand how much a camera can empower him. For someone used to see things blur as they move away, being able to rely on the zoom is amazing. Wow. 
In between shots, Zungu has gained unexpected popularity among the neighborhood kids. Dar es Salaam is a city by the sea, but it's not easy to get there from where Dzungu and Atumani live. Mahmoud can't afford sunscreen for the whole family and hopes the seawater will help the boy's skin heal from sunburn. A month before the start of the tournament, Jerome decides to accept the two boys into the dojo. From now on, Zungu will be able to train with the adults. For the past few days, Zungu and Atumani have been the first ones up. Something has changed in Zungu's head, and the results are starting to show. Yes! Hi, Amen. Very good. Just keep. Babe? Os! Hi, Os. You all Aha. Okay. Os. Os. Arigato Kurema. Stop. Arigato Kurema. Stop. Very good. Ah, good job. Good job. Yes. Good job. Jerome is considered something of a celebrity in the neighborhood where he grew up. 
although he now only goes back to the barber shop. Sensei Edward is back in Tanzania. Later today, there will be a press conference for the tournament and he will be one of the judges. The event is a big one. The entire tournament will be televised live across the country. It's the opportunity Jerome has been waiting for to show everyone the progress of the albinos. For Zungu, this is a completely new situation. Until a few months ago, he would never have imagined that today he would speak on TV and take selfies with his teammates. What they call Dala Dala here are the only public transportation in Dar es Salaam. From here, getting downtown can take three hours. So, to avoid nasty surprises, Jerome and Edward decide to pick up the boys. In total? Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the photo. <laughs> photo is off. Everything is ready for the tournament to begin. Although a samurai would never admit it, Jerome is tense. He wants everything to be perfect for the Japanese guests. After the break will come the moment Zungu has been waiting for for months. If everything goes as planned, 
the boy may receive an invitation to go to Japan. It's me. Sans takim to akose. Okay. All right. When everything seems ready, something unexpected happens. The minutes pass, and the tournament does not start again. The tension is palpable. Something is not going right. The Japanese guests ask to speak with Zungu. But the translator on the smartphone is not enough in a moment like this. And so, it's Sensei Edward who has to explain to Zungu why he won't be able to participate in the tournament. The wounds he has on his arms have been deemed incompatible with competitive activity. They could bleed and create problems for the other participants. For Zungu, it is a very hard blow, but the tournament must go on. And so the boy goes where nobody can see him cry. Karate master Gishin Funakoshi, founder of the Shotokan style, wrote, The ultimate goal of karate is not victory or defeat, but the perfection of the character of the participants. For Zungu and Atomani, karate is not a choice, but a necessity. Of Japan is a postponed. Meet me, son. Meet me, son. 